So just to clarify this for a minute. Uh, so some of you, how many people think you're going to be psychology majors of some kind? How many people know you're definitely not going to be psychology majors? How many aren't sure? Good. It's probably good to be not sure in general. Um, so anyway, just to clarify this, so it's weird. So in a sense, UCI has three, and it's just sort of a natural way that the school evolved, that we actually have three different psychology departments here. Uh, you know, the two major ones, there's, there's uh, uh, psychology and social behavior, and then there's the Department of Cognitive Sciences. We also have the Department of Neurobiology and Behavior, which uh, years ago was all psychologists, what they called biological or physiological psychologists. Now increasingly they're neuroscientists. Uh, doing things, but they you know, do, do work that's very related to us. We actually, in, in the education school, lots of psychologists, tons of psychologists around here. But in this, this class is, again, run uh, or shared by both of these two schools, and it's a, uh, or two, two uh, departments, and they're two different majors. And it's important at some point for you to start thinking about well, which one of those majors is the right one for you. Because we do, although we're both within the field of psychology, we don't overlap. Uh, uh, particularly well, again, psychology and social behaviors and social ecology, cognitive science in school, social sciences. Um, so PSB, my department, really focuses on uh, social psychology, personality psychology, abnormal psychology, the sort of stuff that we're talking about in this class. This class really covers the kind of material that the people in my department do research on, right? So if the stuff in this C series is what lights you up, Right, then that's really the major that you want to go toward, right? So we study uh, how people reason, feel, interact across the lifespan. We have developmental psychologists, we have cultural psychologists, uh, and how people, a lot of health psychology in our department, how, how psychological processes affect mental, physical health. Cognitive sciences in, uh, alternatively focus on mathematical behavioral science, like modeling behavior, per basic perception, vision, uh, hearing, uh, sensation, language, cognitive neuroscience, those sorts of uh, things. So if that's the kind of stuff that lights you up, then you want to go in that direction. So it's really the case that the, the, the 911A uh, class is really, that's what cognitive science does. The C course, which we're in now, is what PSB does. The B course is kind of a, a mixture of the two. Right, so it's got some uh, development and it's got some, you know, some, some other stuff in it, and that's kind of the mixture. But again, it's, if, if you're trying to decide on a major, we get into this long, a lot where people are, are in cognitive science, for example, they're in their junior year and they're going, I really want to switch, but I don't want to you know, have to go back and do different things. So it's good if you kind of get yourself situated and um, you know, figure out which, which department you want to be in. Ours is better, woo, right? <laughs> Although we have plenty of majors, um, lots of majors. So anyway, that's, a, that's the distinction between the two. Let me talk just a little bit about psychology. I just want to kind of introduce the general, uh, you know, it's hard when the class is split up into three, but I want to give some just sort of basic introductory uh, comments here and tell you a little bit about, what, again, what we're doing in this class. So psychology really is the scientific study of behavior and mental processes. That's the simple, very simple definition that's given in the chapter one of your uh, Gleitman text. It covers, psychology covers a huge amount of territory, right? That's why probably why there's so many psychologists in so many different places around the university, right? They cover all sorts of, it's a, it's a it's this sort of enormous topic. Uh, and again, it's because it's interested in behavior, what people do. Right? And people do lots of different things. Right? And there's different ways of getting at it. So we're, and again, it's primarily interested in human behavior, but many psychologists are interested in animal behavior as well. Right? So they're interested in animal, but they're not, they're fundamentally interested in, in human psychology. When it's psychology, we're really interested in humans and what they do, but very often, because there's this continuity, right, in animal species, uh, that, that very often animals, uh, studying other animals, their physiology, their behavior can really inform the, the, the basis of human behavior. And we're gonna, that'll be a theme that you'll see in this class a lot, this sort of continuity that we are these social animals, that humans are animals and we're uh, subject to all the same sort of uh, evolutionary pressures uh, that other animal species 
are uh, uh, subject to, and there's a real continuity, there's a real similarity many times, in, and also differences in between animal and human behavior, so sometimes people study uh, those underpinnings. But again, fundamentally, they're, in, they're interested in doing that to inform our understanding of human uh, behavior, right? And behavior is anything. Behavior is what people do, right? You're doing stuff right now. I'm doing stuff right now, right? And you're doing simple stuff, right? You have reflexes and sensations and uh, perceptions and some really kind of fundamental stuff. Again, the Many of that, those things that have a real continuity in the way that your psychology works is very similar to the way other animals' psychology works in these simple ways. But psychology is also interested in all the complex things people do. So things like language and morality and you know, complicated anal, you know, analogical reasoning, uh, how we act in groups, why we love the people we love, why we hate the people we hate, why we help some people, why people are capable of this incredible altruism and, and why they're also capable of just horrendous aggression. Uh, you know, with all the things that we hope and dream and uh, the way we think about ourselves, the way we reflect about it, the way we understand ourselves, even the way that we try to think and understand how other people think. So psychology, trying to understand how people think is a behavior, it's the way we act, and psychologists try to understand that kind of thing, right? And that's really, these more complex kind of behaviors are really the sort of topic that we're going to be talking about in here, right? The kind of the, the rich, everyday social behaviors that people engage in. Now, one of the things you find is a lot of people don't think that this is the stuff of psychology, right? Or the stuff of science. So again, it's what's important about the definition, right? It's a scientific study of behavior. So we're interested in scientifically studying things that a lot of people think is more amenable to poetry than it is to science. So things like love. Why do you love the people you love? You know, why do you dislike people? Why do people get into fights? Why are people capable of sort of, we've had a, we're gonna talk about later in the course some of this, uh, the police shootings and the uh, issues of race that uh, plague this country. Uh, you know, why are people, uh, just uh, put up a picture of this little girl uh, that in a plane crash that then seven year old, her family died, and then she made her way out of the woods. I don't know if you heard about this. It's incredible, these people are, these incredible feats of strength that people are capable of. You know, why do we have, you know, uh, you know sexual uh, interests, uh, you know, all the sort of things that people do. And a lot of people don't really want to, first of all, they don't think, you can't study that. That's not science, that's poetry, right? That's just stuff. Right, so don't think you can do it, and a lot of people don't want to do it, right? They don't really want to know why they love their boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, right? They just, I don't want to have that reduced to science. But that's what psychologists do. They take everything, even these really rich behaviors that we try to subject it to scientific analysis to try to understand why those things happen. Why do people do the things they do? And that's what's important, right? We, and that's what distinguishes psychology from, uh, you know, as a science from poetry or just sort of speculating about uh, uh, things. So psychology, uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, the mantra, psychology is science, right? And psychologists have a little chip on their shoulder about this a little bit because some of the natural scientists, the chemists, physicists, that kind of people go, oh yeah, she, all right, you do science. Uh huh. That's cute, cute little science that you're doing. I love that, right? But that's not. But the important thing about science is it's not about the subject matter, right? So a lot of people don't think it's science unless there's electricity, or blood and guts or something like that. Then that's science, dude. You know, that's like, you know, that that's that that that's real stuff. And the stuff that you do is is some funny kind of social science, right? But you don't need electricity, chemicals, blood and guts. What you need to do is adhere to the scientific method. It's a way of approaching things, right? It's a way of trying to objectively analyze why things happen, causal relationships in the world, right? In this case, we're simply interested in causal relationships about behavior. So psychology, again, often takes ordinary, everyday behavior, the kind of stuff we think of as more poetry than science, and subjects it to this kind of analytical approach. Right, uh, and in, in this kind of rigorous scientific method. Now we won't go over the sort of details of that kind of method uh, in here, which I sometimes do, but the basic idea is again, we use empirical methods to test hypotheses and generate theories about the causes 
of behavior. All those terms should be you know, fairly familiar to you, right? So we try to collect data. Uh, you know, we use empirical methods. We don't just say, oh, I bet people do that for that reason, right? We want to go out and collect data on it to test some hypothesis that we have about why I, I think you're, you behave this way uh, for a reason. The, <clears throat> the goal, again, is to generate theory, right? To say, I, I have a theory. I understand what the causes of this kind of behavior are. I have a theory about it. I can generate hypotheses. I can test those hypotheses to see if they're true or not. Again, so psychology is not about describing, just describing the things that people do. That's an important first step in any science, right? You got to describe stuff. You got to sort of see, you know, even that they're subatomic particles, you have to know how they act, what they do. But then ultimately what science always wants to do is know why. Why do they do that? So I know that these subatomic particles do that. Why do they do that? I know that planets revolve around the sun. Why do they do that? What's, you know, what causes that? You know, why if I drop a ball, does it fall to the ground? What cause, why? Right? So those kind of scientific, and you want to get underneath it. Oh yeah, there's this theory of gravitation. There's this idea that, you know, ma you know objects with uh, mass have mutual attraction. Oh yeah, so you get down to try to understand why things happen. And psychology is absolutely no different. Now, the one thing that's a little different about it is that science, in psychology is, all science is hard, but studying everyday human behavior, the things you guys are doing right now, right, that's hard. Well, why is it hard? Well, because people are squirmy little suckers. People don't really lend themselves well to science. Not only are you complicated, right? So human behavior is really complex. The things that you do, you might do for multiple reasons. Right, there might be different kinds of why that you, you know, why do you love the person you love? Well, it may not be simple, right? There may be lots of different reasons why you do that. And figuring out which of those things is true is hard. Why? Well, you, you might just ask people, hey, why do, you, why do you like your boyfriend? And they'll tell you, but people don't know why they do things, right? Our behavior is complicated. It's, much of it is deep down. It's very, we're going to talk about this idea of kind of automatic behavior, implicit behavior, things that you're not really sure why you're doing the things that you're doing. You're, in a sense, just observing yourself just like I am. You're going, oh, wow, hmm, I did that. Gee, I wonder why. You generate theories. So asking you, you may not know. That's not a reasonable way to go about uh, finding the answer. People may lie too, right? So they may not know or they may just lie about it. If I ask, ask people, you know, notorious questions like, oh, how many sexual partners did you have, you know, last year? Well, men tend to inflate, women tend to deflate. What they tell you probably doesn't make, isn't, you can't take that as true, right? So there's lots of things like that. There's also constraints on what we could do to people, right? You just can't do, I may want to know why you do what you do. It doesn't mean I can just do anything to you to, to, to do that. I can't subject you to certain things. Science could learn all sorts of stuff, right? If I just said, gee, I wonder what this part of your brain does. Well, I'm going to hack that part out and I'm going to see what you can't do anymore, right? Science would just, woof, right? The, the incredible, uh, you know, incredibly rapid uh, progress would happen if we did that. But it wouldn't be a very nice thing to do, and it wouldn't be an ethical thing to do, right? So there's a lot of ethical constraints in studying people, right? Not only do people are complicated, they don't always, uh, you know, they, they won't tell you what they do, they don't always know what they do, and they, they, you just can't do anything to people. I can't, uh, you know, so a question like, uh, do, does smoking cause cancer? Well, it would have been great to randomly assign people to smoking conditions and non-smoking conditions. You know, do some experiment where I make you smoke uh, and then see if you get cancer or not. But again, there's constraints on what you can do. And so what that, so not only are people complicated, they're hard to study, uh, there's ethical constraints. So it means that psychologists have to use really creative methods sometimes of figuring things out. Because again, we don't want to speculate, we want to know. Right, I, want to, I don't want to guess, I want to know why you're doing what you're doing to the best of my scientific ability. And so, you know, we do, the psychologists use a whole bunch of range of methods. They use surveys, uh, they'll do, you know, longitudinal studies where you follow people over time. We do experiments, sometimes out in the field where you actually uh, subject people to sort of mild little things, put them in different situations. We do that in the laboratory. We use uh, increasingly things like the, uh, functional magnetic uh, resonance imaging or F. MRI to look at people's brains to see what parts of your brains are lighting up and are active while you're doing certain things. All sorts of 
different approaches now. Increasingly, lots of biological uh, approaches are becoming more possible now, all sorts of different ways to do it. And I hope to kind of illustrate for you over this course how creative psychologists can be, right, in trying to study the things that they study, right, and how difficult it is to really draw firm conclusions. There's a lot that psychology knows, right? M huge progress because it's a relatively recent field, too. It's um, you know the, the 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 progress curve right is really steep in in the last hundred years, but there's still a lot that we don't know, and I'll try to tell you this is what I think. We know scientists aren't really sure about this if they don't know. Doesn't mean it's not good science. That's what good science is: is knowing what you know, knowing what you don't know, right? Uh, and again, I'm trying to illustrate all of that for you as well. Any questions about that stuff? So what is it that we're going to talk about in this class, right? Again, psychology is a huge field. It takes you a, a year to get through an introductory uh, course on it here, all the different aspects of what people do. Uh, in this class, we're going to, uh, what I want to do is kind of give you, a, work through a little uh, thing that I call the person by situation matrix to give you a sense of the, the three different parts of this class and, and uh, how we're uh, looking at human behavior. So, like I said, psychology is the science of human behavior, the stuff, right, that, uh, that we're looking at. And this is a way of illustrating the stuff that we have to work with, right? If you're a chemist, chemist you look at chemicals, you know, physicists look at whatever they look at, big and small, right? This is kind of what we look at. There's, we got people on one side, there's different people, lots of different people here, and there's different situations that you're in, right? So when we're the kind of stuff, the, the subject matter that we have to look at is different people behaving in different situations. You almost never see a person without a situation, right? You're in some kind of situation. You almost never see a situation without a person because you're always there and you're one of the people involved, right? Right, so this is kind of the stuff. You look at the just wealth of human behavior and then we try to draw inferences uh, about why people are doing what we're doing. So let me kind of walk you through an example of this. Uh, so let's say uh, that we uh, are going to observe four different people in four different situations, right? The situations that we're talking about are here in class, in a class. So let's say you're sitting there and you're watching uh, people in a class just like this one, li listening to a lecture, whatever. Next situation, they're at a party on campus somewhere, you know, Beer keg, the whole thing, everybody there having a good time. Next you're at a game, maybe a big UCI basketball game or uh, some, some big sporting event, uh, you know, huge stadium full of people, uh, arena full of people. And finally, you watch people at the dentist when they're waiting to, uh, for a painful dental surgery, right? And you observe people in these different situations. So class, party, game, dentist. Let's say we got somebody named J Jane, somebody named Sam, some random person named Donald, and another random person named Lindsay. All right, so we're just going to see what they do in these different situations, right? So here you watch them in class, and here you go. So like you, most of them are sitting here quietly listening. So you see Jane, uh, she's listening to class, but she's kind of she's one of those people like some of you are. Like, oh, 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 I want to answer. Oh, yeah, answer, go pick me. Oh, I have a question, All right? So she's asking questions. Uh, some of you will do that. You'll see that there are people in this class going to be asking a lot of questions. Sam, well, he's mostly, he's kind of quiet. He's sitting here listening. Right, he's not doing much, but he's sitting, listening in class, doesn't ask very many questions. Donald, he's listening. Not really. He's not really, he thinks he knows it all anyway. I've got to teach this class better than this guy. This guy doesn't know anything. How much money does he have? Right? So uh, he's not really listening. And Lindsay, uh, you know, she's asking questions. Can I get a drink you know, somewhere around here? Is it some bartender or something? She's hanging out, but she's listening. So they're all sitting, listening to class here. Next, you see them at a party, right? So Jane, again, she's one of those people. She's got a lampshade on her head. Woo! She, she's partying it up, having a good time. Sam, he's there. He's having a good time. He's sitting in the corner, kind of quietly chatting with somebody or, you know, just, just hanging out. Donald, he's the bouncer, right? He's at the party. He says, I'll be the bouncer and throwing people out. You're fired. Get out. Right? 
get out of here. I don't like you. I don't like your face. Get out of here. Lindsay, she's at the party. She's drinking, right? She's drinking too much, wearing too little. So I used to tell my daughters, don't drink too much, wear too little, right? Um, and that's, that's her MO. So they're all at the party doing that, doing their thing. Next, you see them at a game, right? And they're all yelling. So what happens at game, you know, at you know, this big stadium, they're rooting for their team, they're all, yeah, well, you know, everybody's got the letters painted on them, that funny cheese hat or whatever it is, you know, whatever the UCI anteater hat um, or the CIA shirt or whatever it is, right? And, uh, and James yelling loudly, Sam, you know, he's, long, he's kind of a quiet guy, he's yelling a little quieter. But he's yelling, whoo. Uh, uh, Donald, he's yelling, you know, he's going, oh, you ref, your guy probably wasn't even born in the United States. God, I hate this, but I can do this better, I can play better than you. But he's yelling it, right, louder. And uh, Lindsay's yelling for more beer, right, but she's yelling. So they're all at this, at this city, uh, you know, situation, you know, it's, wow, that's interesting that, you know, when people get, when they're in this big crowd, they kind of get out of themselves, they do things they wouldn't normally do. Oh, that's kind of interesting. And finally, uh, you see them at the dentist. And one of the things that you uh, find at the dentist, when people are in, in a scary situation, they very often tend to affiliate with other people. They tend to sort of seek out other people and talk to them because they're scared and they want to know how other people are doing. And, and so uh, Jane, she's doing that a lot. She's kind of a gregarious person, right? Uh, Sam, he's affiliating sort of quietly. Donald, he's bragging, he's talking to people, telling him, my cavity's huge. I'm a huge cavity, it's much bigger than your cavity. My cavity's better than your cavity, right? Uh, and uh, Lindsay, she uh, really wants to affiliate. Say, hey, baby, or, you, know, you want to affiliate? Um, <laughs> so they're all there. So that's the stuff. That's human behavior, right? You see different people, different situations, behaving similarly, differently, and you try and make sense out of it. What, you know, what's going on here? And there's at least three kind of interesting ways to approach these data. And that captured the three different fields that we're going to talk about in this class over the next 10 weeks. So some people will look at, and it's really what people are interested in, all, their, all interesting perspectives on human behavior, but different scientists are, diff, are interested in different aspects of this matrix. So some people look at this matrix and go, wow, what's so interesting is how, the diff how people act differently across situations and pretty similar to, to each other, right? And that's what social psychologists are interested in. So the field of social psychology, which is we're going to take up first, is really the study of how it is that social situations affect people's behavior and how the, the behavior that you enact is very often a function of the situation that you inhabit. So a social psychologist would look at this and be interested in the columns, right? How situations lead people to respond similarly to one another. So why is it that you guys are sitting here in class listening to me? I've tried this with, other, with my kids and other people. They won't sit there and listen to me while I'm lecturing at them like this. They would have been gone a long time ago, right? But you guys, doesn't matter how boring I am, a lot of you are going to sit here, listen to me. So that's kind of interesting. You sit here quietly, you kind of know the rules, you do your thing. You know, at a, at a party, Interesting open situation, but people might do different things. And that, that doesn't seem to have the power. At a game, what happens when people are in these big crowds? Why do they kind of why do they get in this mob mentality? Why do they sort of lose themselves and behave in ways that they wouldn't in other times? I don't see any of you, you know, without a shirt on, you know, with with ditto, you know, <laughs> painted across you. That'd be cool though. It's extra credit. I forgot, I gotta add some extra credit. Um, Right, and, and, and a dentist, why do people affiliate when, when they're fearful, right? So that's a social psychologist would look at this and go, that's what's so interesting is how the situations affect people, right? And so that's, like, that's the first third of the course we're going to take up that idea, right? Other people, however, look at this and see something different, right, or interested in different things. They're interested in why it is that different people act differently because not everybody's acting the same in these situations. There's these clear individual differences. And these individual differences, that's the stuff of personality psychology. And that's what we'll take up second. Right? This, and personality psychology is interested in how people respond differently than others, again, in the same situation, but kind of consistently across situations. What makes you different from other people? And however much situations affect people's behavior, people still are different. They're unique. They differ on all kinds of interesting dimensions. And some people really want to know why. Some people want to know why situations affect people the way they do. Other people want to know why are certain individuals different from other people. So why is Jane outgoing? 
where Sam's more introverted. Why is Donald such a pompous jerk, right? Right? Why does he act like that? What, you know, what, what made him like that? Why is Lindsay a little sort of unstable? Right? What's going on with her? Why is she responding differently you know, in that situation than other people? But again, consistently over time. So you know, across all the situations, Jane tends to be uh, extroverted, Sam more introverted, Donald has you know, his consistency and so does Lindsay. So personality psychology is getting a study of that. And we're going to talk about uh, those kinds of things. We're going to talk about intelligence. Uh, first is a kind of a classic individual difference with really controversial history of that concept. But then we're going to talk about personality theory. I'm going to talk about Freud for a couple of days is sort of the classic and then bringing up some more modern research on personality. Again, all of it focused on trying to understand why you're the person you are and why you're different from the person next to you, right? What are your unique experiences caused you, right? So that's the second part. So we've got social psychology, personality psychology, you get one interested in the columns, the other interested in the rows. The last part of the class is really sort of an extension of personality psychology. So what is it, what happens when people act really, really differently from other people? Right? When their behavior is really unusual in some ways and maybe problematic for them. And that's really the study of abnormal psychology. So when a lot of people think about psychology, they think about abnormal psychology. They go, oh yeah, so, you know, psychology is a study of why people talk to trees, things like that, right? Why do people have schizophrenia? Why do they have other, you know, sort of, uh, you know, depression disorders, things like that, right? So that's, it's sort of an extension of individual differences. And when that point, when you hit the point when somebody's not just has a unique personality, but has a personality that's problematic in some way. People respond very differently from others and in potentially harmful ways, ways that are harmful to yourself and to others. Now, it's hard, now what's hard about this is to figure out when something is actually a problem. When is it an actually treatable problem and when is it just an idiosyncratic difference? So with Lindsay, right, she's done a lot of weird things. So, you know, she's shown up in all sorts of situations. Right, that make you think that her behavior is potentially problematic. She's gone through, uh, you know, various phases, sort of an, you know, uh, problem where she's really you know, uh, thin. Uh, this, this is my favorite one. Looks just like me this weekend in Mexico. <laughs> I, just, I just photoshopped her face over it. Really, no, um, so that's uh, you know, you know, all sorts of ways, right? So you go, well, is she? Does she have? Is she just unusual? on the spectrum or is she at some point where she, that this is so unusual as to be a problem? That maybe she's again a, a harm or a threat to herself versus other people. But that's really hard because a lot of value judgments come into this. So some kinds of difference we don't mind so much, other kinds of difference we do. Right? And that changes over time and it changes historically. You know, who you want to sleep with, right? Is that if you want to sleep with someone different from other people, some of your, uh, you know, the, the same sex as you, right? Is that a problem that needs to be treated to harm, or is that just individual variation? This field has, you know, dealt with that and tried to, and, and that same problem about when is it real? When does something really become a problem? You know, uh, is is kind of the the, you know, the the where I think the interesting territory is, you know. And there's all sorts of other things that, like this. I, so this, I don't even remember Octomom. So this is a woman who had, I think she had eight kids at once, and she already had a four or six, then, I don't know, she's had, she's in a porn movie after that, and she's, you know, whether she's taking care of her kids, is that just quirky? Or is that something that should be treated, right? You know, how about something, this is a, a Shia LaBeouf, I don't know if you know, I think that's how you say his name. Uh, I used to be in kid shows, I remember when my kids were younger, and now he's a little crazy doing his thing. So is that, is he just quirky? He's walking around with a bag on his head? Now what is that? What about, uh, what, what about uh, you know, Charlie Sheen who went through his crazy phase, right? You know, what's going on with that? Right? So you gotta, it's, it's hard sometimes to know what is abnormal behavior and what isn't, right? And how, what kind of value judgments that you have to deal with that and how sometimes somebody may change and get a little bit better. Are they better or are they not? And again, the key is if somebody is got so different that they have a problem that is causing harm to themselves and others, then we want to treat it somehow. And at the very last part of the course, we'll talk about treatment and how, how 
you know, in a sense, again, that's all, often what people think about with psychology too, is the tr treatment of psychological disorders. It is a helping profession. How good are we at that? What works? What doesn't work? What do we know about that? And we know that people do get better sometimes. So Charlie's gotten a little bit better he, after he got thrown off of his uh, two and a half men show, eventually ma made friends again. We have lots of stars. I just use stars, not that we're not going to study uh, stars, but they're kind of an interesting example too because what, one of the things I think are interesting is why do some stars seem so problematic, right? The same fame that will drive one over the edge won't drive somebody else over the edge, right? And it points to an interesting sort of take home point that we'll have, make at the end of the class that very often whether your behavior becomes problematic is often a combination of something about you, some vulnerability you have and some experience that, that you have. That people who have particular vulnerabilities won't respond well to a particular experience and some people will respond perfectly well to that same experience for some reason, right? It's the interaction and I think it's, it, with these stars sometimes it seems like that. Why? When they seem to have everything, just some of them go over the edge, some of them seem perfectly fine and that's a general principle around. So you see this, I know, I got Britney Spears, she went through her crazy phase and now she's back uh, again and uh, again hopefully uh, we'll get uh, Lindsay, I don't know what she's doing now, I don't know how well she's doing. Uh, but hopefully she'll do well. And that's, again, the three parts of the course. So the first third of the course, before the first exam, we're going to talk about social psychology. Second part of the course, we're going to talk about personality psychology, individual differences. Third part of the course, we talk about abnormal psychology, psychological disorders, with the end being about treatment and how well we can treat people, right? And that's what we're going to be doing in here. And we will start up. Next time, talking about uh, the social psychology. If anybody has any questions, come on up. If you have any issues with the class and getting in, come on up to this right corner. Otherwise, we'll see you on Thursday. You're out of here.